Hopkinton and welcome to the premiere of Hopkinton Weekly, HCAM's newest original series. If you've watched our pandemic series, The Hangout Hour, you'll recognize some familiar themes. Like that show, this program is produced to help connect us, inform us, and foster conversation. I think we all know this is a busy world we live in and sometimes it feels like we're still getting used to interacting again. So, Hawkington Weekly is here for us, live most Wednesday evenings at 7 o'clock. We'll have updates, conversations, and interviews with those who help make Hopkinton the great place it is. And spoilers, that's all of us. This series is the anchor for our new Wednesday night lineup of original programming that we're calling Must See HCAM TV. It all starts with new episodes of Sports Talk at 5.30 and HCAM News at 6.30, and must-see HCAM TV will continue after Hopkinton Weekly with a debut time slot at 7.30. Details on that at the end of this show. But first, as I'm saying hello to you, let's roll a short clip of others saying hello to us. Weekly, have a great show. Hi, Hopkinton Weekly. Best of luck to the show. Hello, Hopkinton Weekly. Hello, Hopkinton Weekly. Hello, Hopkinton Weekly. Good luck with the show. Hello, Hopkinton Weekly. Hello, Hopkinton Weekly. Hello, Hopkinton Weekly. Good luck with the show. Hello, Hopkinton Weekly. Hello, Hopkinton Weekly. Best of luck with your show. Hello, Hopkinton Weekly. What's going on, Hopkinton Weekly? Good luck with the show. Hello, Hopkinton Weekly. Hello, Hopkinton Weekly. Hello, Hopkinton Weekly. Good luck with the show. Hello, Hopkinton Weekly. Good luck with your new show. Thank you all, and thank you too for tuning in to our show. And thanks to our superintendent of schools. Dr. Carol Cavanaugh, who was kind enough to stop by and fill us in on all the latest. Carol, welcome to the show. Well, thanks, Jim. You know I'm what? happy to be here to be able to say hello, Hopkinton Weekly, in person. Right. And, <laughs> and you know, I was just telling you earlier, you're like the great bridge um, guest on our show, because Carol was on our last episode of The Hangout Hour, and now our first episode of Hopkinton Weekly. Yeah. Now, to start off, before we start chatting about what's happening in the school system, we have a short video that Mike produced of uh, first day at school. And you were there, and I thought that we could just kind of get your impressions as we see some of these clips. Sure, that'd be great. So, they will roll it. All right, so what do you think? How, how did the day look from your perspective? Oh, I thought the day was so full of energy. Um, I think I've been saying this to a lot of people. When we left school in June, people were still kind of pandemic. Yeah. And I mean, I think you'll see in some of these clips that those kids and the teachers and the administrators, we were kind of on fire. Mm. It was an amazing start to the school year. It feels really good. Yeah. I thought at the beginning, getting ready for it, oh my goodness, there's so much stuff. But then when it was there, it was like, wow, what a feeling. You know, we're all back together again. And um, it was just feeling like, like it had been before, you know, and to see all the, like, the happy faces, and you know, they're happy to be there. It was really good. I think people are thrilled to be back. And, you know, I think even as you're watching some of these videos, you see that all of the teachers at Hopkins are wearing their, you know, Hopkins blue t-shirts, mm -hmm. and their theme is there's only one you, and the kids are coming in, and of course you're apprehensive as a kid on the first day, but Mrs. Bolella just made everyone, out like it felt like a community on the first day. Yes, yeah, that's really nice. That's really nice. And, you know, um, it is that. And to see, like, they're so invested in it, you know. They're just so passionate about what they do. Um, I've always said, I understood, you know, being a teacher is hard work. But seeing it now, it is so much hard work, you know. And on top of that, the care and the love that they pour into you know, educating this next generation of students, it really shows how Hawkington kind of percolates to the surface in many ways. Yeah. 
you know, it's interesting because I don't know if people realize how much work goes into preparation mm -hmm. to open the doors to literally hundreds and thousands of kids. You know, at the morning of Hopkins opening, we were still standing around thinking, will we be inside or outside? Because, as you remember, it rained. Yeah. And then suddenly the sun came out. I mean, yeah. It was almost like a symbol in real life. It was great. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yep. And then, of course, our kids at HHS, all the seniors, mm -hmm. did their senior thing. Right? Yeah. But I think, you know, when you look at, at Hopkins kids' developing community and where kids end up in grade 12, like, they, they were a force. Yeah. You know, it's beautiful yeah. Yeah. to grow up in a community like that. I, I can't believe how early these kids will get up <laughs> and stuff. You know, kids in my TV class, they're like, hey, you know, I need to do an interview before school. Can you get there at 7.15 so I can do my interview? And I'm, that's 45 minutes early. It's really early in the morning. Huge investment on yeah. in the part of our kids. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I mean, here they all are walking into the high school, and, and I think you could just sense their excitement and yep. joy. Smiling and laughing yeah. there. Yeah, it was a great day. Yeah. I mean, a great few days. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Great starts of the year. Yes. All right. Hey, let's step over to our HCAM Cafe set, and we can uh, have a chat sure. about what's happening. Yeah. All right. Now, I think that it's probably known that we can't have this conversation without talking about everything that could be happening at Elmwood School. So why don't, we, why don't we jump right into things and like, let's get into that and then we can follow up with some other stuff after. Sure. No, I'm glad you asked about that because I think people for the last couple of years have been hearing about the Elmwood Project, but it feels to people, I'm sure, in the community like nothing's happening, mm -hmm. you know. And then all of a sudden now things are going to start happening. Mm -hmm. They're going to start happening very quickly. Uh, before we get to the end of the month of February of 2023, we're going to have to make decisions like if you are building a new school, where will it go? Will it be a 2-3 school or a 2-3-4 school? And, you know, I mean, those are huge decisions and they impact the community. It's, it's yes. exciting. Yeah. Every time there's a new school, there's always a conversation about that. You know, should we have districts? Should we just, like, go through and change a new school every grade? And it's, you know, it's like a, an interesting and a passionate conversation because that's really what you're all about. It's about the philosophy of teaching and of learning and what's the best way to do it. So that actually makes me wonder, do you have an opinion or as a superintendent, do you stay out of that opinion and let the community decide? Well, it really is a community-based decision, mm -hmm. but of course, uh, Mrs. Carver and I will develop a team to put together an educational plan. And when we do that, that will, hopefully, the people in the community will hear you know, what we're saying. and. And it really isn't just opinion. There'll be an awful lot of research that goes into that as well. So it will help the community, I think, make an informed decision. Mm -hmm. you know, and there's a domino effect as well. If you build a 2-3-4 school, now you've pulled grade 4 out of, Elm, uh, out of Hopkins. Mm -hmm. And so does that become a 5-6 school? What becomes of Hopkins, really? Right, mm -hmm. right. Um, so one thing I'm wondering is, and then let's get into some of the slides, because you brought a lot of data with you. Um, what are the options? Or is that in these slides that will be talked about at these forums and uh, put before the town? Sure. So we will be, you know, I have a slide where you can see just how many sites are available right now. And what we did was we took a look at any site that's greater than 10 acres, okay. whether it is publicly owned or whether there's a private landowner. And we are in the process of taking a look at where all of those sites are and kind of looking geographically where they are. Are there wetlands on the site? How accessible is it? Would you have to make a purchase or not? I mean, so all of those pieces really go into the decision making. And that's going to happen in the next couple of months. You know, wow. We're really going to be looking at that. Yeah. So people need to tune in. Now, was this just something where you just asked the town hall, oh, can I have this? Is it already existent? Or did you have to do research and you know, tease out this kind of information? So we have an owner's project manager, okay. and we have an architectural company that's working for us. Mm -hmm. So what they can do is go into the town's website and just pull out which are, are greater than 10 okay. acre parcels. But you know who's been wonderfully helpful is Mike Shepard in sort of guiding the, these are the ones that yeah. oh, you, know, so you can kind of get. A, so a there's a bunch of them, but there's also a lot of direction on, like, these aren't suitable, these are really good Correct. connections to main roads or something like that. Exactly, yes. Traffic, okay. traffic mitigation, all of that plays into it. Okay. Yeah. Um, and where does the whittling down come, like down to one parcel or not? Would that be at a community-wide level or would that be at a, a district level or at a governmental level? So the elementary school building committee 
We'll make a recommendation to the school committee to vote on this. We'll make a recommendation to the select board to vote on this. Um, but ultimately, they'll sort of put forward one parcel of land in the end. And you can see on the map, there are over 40 right now. Right, right. So wow. They have their work cut out for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so listen, I'm, ha I'm asking a lot of questions, but I know you have like three or four other slides. So is, is there anything else that you want to say first before I take uh, you away by questions? No, I, I think, you know, maybe just the timeline is really interesting because you can see that in something, when we submitted our statement of interest to the MSBA, it was March 25th of 2020, so over two years ago. And you can see that before you open the doors, that construction phase is carrying all the way out into 2026. Mm -hmm. So interestingly, in those yellow blocks and blue blocks that you see there, that's the decision-making period. So the decision-making period is just so small, but people now have to kind of get in tune to what does this entail? Right, mm. right. Now, it's a big project like everyone. There is a lot going on here, and it's projected to wrap up around 2026 when, when it's finished. Um, if you had to say, what, what keeps you up at night? like worrying or concerned about this? Is it getting particular information out that make it, what, what is it that you want to make sure happens? I think my worry, my greatest worry would be the in-between time. Because we have several school years between now and the fall or the winter of 2026 where we are going to have literally hundreds of kids joining the Hopkinton Public Schools. At least that's what our demographer and the MSBA demographer are predicting. Mm -hmm. And so if that's the case, we need to think about where will those kids be housed, not only at the Elmwood School, but also at the Hopkins School. Mm -hmm. you know, I think Elmwood peaks in about 2027, but you know, it, yeah. whether it's 2027 or, or it's something else, I mean, we're, we're building and building and building our enrollment numbers but we're not building any more classroom space. And you know, we did just put four classrooms onto Elmwood as well. Right, yeah. right, and put classes onto high school as well, too. And Hopkins. Oh, right, yes. right. So does this timeline work? With that, if that's the school that is to happen and it comes on at that time, do you have um, a plan to accommodate all those kids until this school opens its doors? So people have asked that question. Uh, Right now at Hopkins, we have some fourth grade classrooms that are as high as 25 students. And so we are going to have to figure out where we can find more classroom space. And you know probably from the center school project or probably from the marathon school right now, you start to do things like dismantle art rooms. Uh -huh. So there goes the art room and you get art on a cart. Uh, the Hopkins Library is a pretty enormous space and we are thinking that with some sort of artificial walls, we could perhaps get two classrooms out of that space. Okay, I see. And you know, I mean, as catchy as art on a cart sounds, um, it's really not a good thing because, you know, the basics are there, but I really think that the extracurriculars and all the other things that go on there really help to make a well-rounded individual who is best suited to, you know, enter life. Sure. Um, now, does this accommodate for like, how long do you have projections for for the uh, for the for enrollment? Because right now we're at four thousand students. Four thousand one hundred seventy-three. Okay, and didn't you say your projections top off at like five thousand or something like they that? They do. Okay. Yes. Yes. By the year twenty thirty, but the projection for this year, and when you create a projection for this year, you're really thinking about that would be the number of students you've had you would have by June of twenty twenty-three. We've surpassed that number. Really? Yes. Wow. Already. Okay. All right. So listen, this is a big dealy. Uh, we don't have uh, we don't have all the time here. So right. I wanted to make sure that you're able to say like th we're not making the decision here. What's Correct. happening? What should people know that's coming up in order to get informed and get their voice and opinions heard? So we have a visioning team, and right now we are soliciting people to join that team. And what we're hoping to do is get a really nice cross-section of people. So if you are a community member totally unaffiliated with the schools, you would be welcome to apply to be on that committee. It's hard for us to understand how many people would want to be. I mean, we could probably have 30 or 40 people on our visioning team, but we couldn't have 80 people on our visioning team. So yeah. we're going to just have to be sort of judici judicious about the numbers of people that we have. So that's something that's super important. 
attending the public forums, very important so that people are informed. And as we go, you know, our ESBC2 meetings, you know, if you, anybody ever wants to attend one of those, uh, they, they certainly can. All kinds of social media correspondence with people, um, email, I mean, every way you look, we are, we're pushing out information. Yeah. So I hope people will just tune into that information. Right. Are these informational forums where you watch where information is given to you and then feedback is solicited at a later time? How does that work? No, so it will be very similar to the kickoff meeting we had the other night. Okay. Uh, we did about maybe 40 minutes of presentation and then we left 40 minutes for Q&A. Okay. Yes, so people do have a voice at them. Okay. Um, how did the feedback go on that one? I think it was a, it was a good meeting. Yeah. We had only 19, I think, attendees, but maybe it was because it was the kickoff, and the kickoff isn't all that exciting. Mm -hmm. But I think once we start talking about parcels of land and grade configurations, people will will tune in. Then it gets real. It gets real, and it's going to get real fast. <laughs> right. It's going to get real, real fast. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So stay tuned for that. Lots of lots of things happening there. Let's. Switch gears for a minute in the, the next few minutes that we have, and let's talk about how the year has started. There have been a lot of new faces uh, in administration um, uh, this year. So let's have a review and see how that's been going. Okay, so we have Kylie Murray, who used to be one of our school counselors. She's serving as the interim athletic director this year. Um, I have watched her work, and I think it's a perfect fit for her. Mm -hmm. It's a great job for her. Yeah. Uh, she not only has that counseling background, but she's got this sort of passion, I think, for the way kids interact you know, with athletics and how athletics you know, psychologically um, bolster yep. kids. Uh, so she's got, she's got that. We have a new assistant superintendent, Jeffrey Lebrod, who comes to us from uh, the Sudbury Public Schools. And I think he's made kind of a splash. Mm -hmm. um, he will continue to, to get up to speed on things. All of his grants were submitted on time, so he's doing great. All right. Yep. <laughs> Uh, two new, uh, two new, two new assistant principals. Uh, we have Michelle Tynan in Elmwood and Pat Nash at the middle school. Mm -hmm. Michelle comes from Grafton, and Pat is coming from Westboro. And then we have a new principal at we at uh, Hopkinton Middle School who comes from Westboro High School, whose name is Matt Lafave. And yeah. I think he's doing a really nice job, kind of getting to know his faculty, getting to know the community. Um, really focusing on teaching and learning and a lot of social emotional competencies. So, mm. yeah. I got started in Westboro. Westboro is a nice town. It is nice. You know, uh, they're, they're, um, I really like them. Yeah. What uh, did you do there, Jeff? I, I ran their community access oh, TV. Oh, nice. It was called yeah. uh, WCAT. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, a lot of fun memories there. My, mm -hmm. It was my first job out of um, college. Really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, uh, but, I mean, yeah, they're good. They're good. I'm not going to say anything about yeah. them. Good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And how's your, how's your year going? I think things are going great, yeah. truly. Yeah. I mean, I know I said this at the start of, of tonight's show, but it, back in June, it was hard to know where people were going to be emotionally mm -hmm. when we got back to school in the fall. And, you know, I think if we kind of had a, an emotion meter, mm -hmm. it would be very high right now. Uh, I, I think people just had a great summer and felt like, liberated, you know, and that's, that's such a nice feeling for our people. Yeah. 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 Um, people all reporting that the back to school nights have gone beautifully. You know, so I got so many compliments, I think, from high school parents who said it was great to see the teachers in person. Mr. Bishop's opening remarks were wonderful, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I think that's true in all of our building. You can feel the teacher's passion. Yeah. I heard the video was, was pretty cool, too. Yeah. It was great. Is that an HCM product, Jim? <laughs> You're plugging yourself over there. <laughs> Actually, I, I had students who were um, shooting nice. vid, uh, shooting segments for it, so sure. you know we, we used it as a class thing and watched it in class too. Well, so they did a great job. Really nice. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, like these parents that came in, they're just so nice. They're just so nice. They're so like happy that their kids are having the experiences and the opportunities uh, that they're having at <laughs> at the school that I'm at. On my way into the studio tonight, I met a parent going out, so we chatted a little bit. And uh, he said to me, I just want to say to the teachers, but we love you. I you thought know, <laughs> that was really nice. Yes. And I you think, know, yes. Yeah, uh, parents are just so grateful. They are. Yeah. And I was shooting um, some clips for the HBTO, both at the high school and at the middle school. And you know what? I just really loved being able to say thank you for what you do because, yeah. you know, 
they do so much. Uh, the HEF was yeah. really generous to our, our school uh, in, in like my area. And they just make everybody like so, so appreciated, you know? It's yeah. Such a, it's really like a virtuous cycle. We have incredible support. Yeah. And I think too that, you know, the schools, we try to engage in something that's almost reciprocal. You know, we've, we've put into place social workers and school adjustment counselors because we want to make sure that our kids are healthy and that it even extends, I think, out to yeah. families. Exactly. So if there's something that's really nice, families give and we kind of try to give back. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, as usual, um, our time flies by together when it we're does. chatting. It's, yeah. it's so nice. So we're going to head back over to the big screen and move on to our next segment. Oh, okay. will you stay and be my co-host the rest of the show? Uh, I would love to do that. All right. Sure. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. So this is the big screen. Um, and we have a segment here. We have a new segment that, that, we, uh, that we are just starting. And if you want to just read the teleprompt, there's your part. Oh, sure. Okay. All right, so uh, you do have a regular feature here on Hopkinton Weekly, a segment that you are calling Hello There. Um, and this week you're talking with Terry Malisi, the host of The Gathering, a cooking show produced from Terry's Home Kitchen. And welcome, Terry. All right, so can we get her audio out here? Okay. So this is actually, as you said, this is her home kitchen. Yeah. And um, she used to spend all day like videotaping as she prepared this whole meal. And through the pandemic, she turned it into a live Zoom focused show where she'd be live on the air and she would be um, have everything ready to go, everything portioned, things like half cooked so she could just finish them off. And uh, she is a gourmand, which is a person who's not a chef, but they really love food and they know a lot about it. So. Uh, the gathering is like at her house, um, people would gather for big meals. So she would always be making these big meals. And her show, the philosophy is, if you're hosting um, an evening and it's like a, a Hawaiian meal theme, well, she does everything from appetizers to main dish all the way through to uh, desserts. And it's all along a theme. And the end of the show is when her guests arrive. And they sit down and they start enjoying the meal mm. that she just worked on. I was going <coughs> to ask you if she was a trained chef or if mm -hmm. this was just born out of passion. I mean, I just, you know, you know, like everybody likes something different. This is such passion for her. Okay. She puts so much time and energy into it. And she gets so much out of it, which now I understand. Um, you know, my kids are now out of the house. They're in college, they're doing their careers. And now, so I'm cooking for my wife and I. And... It is so nice when I cook something and my wife comes home and she likes it after being at work, you know? It's a good feeling. There is something rewarding when you yeah. prepare a meal and people enjoy it. Yes, yes. exactly, exactly. So, and, all right, I, she has to talk. I, I, don't, I see your lips moving, but I don't hear her out here. So, I, oh, I heard that. Oh, good. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, wonderful. All right. Um, Welcome, Terry. It's nice to see you. <laughs> well, nice to see you, Jim, and nice to hear you. Thanks. And uh, you must know Carol uh, Kavanaugh, our superintendent of schools. I was just telling her all about your show. Yes, hello. How are you? I'm, I'm doing well. How are you, Terry? It's so exciting to, uh, to be part of this. Oh, well, um... Glad, glad to be part of it as well. And um, yes, I, so I had told your whole story about and what and the show did. is all about. And I was just wrapping yeah. up with that she does all the editing. She does everything. Oh, wow. She is like a full fledged producer from start to finish, making a TV show, as well. And this isn't related to us, but she's also an author. So oh. she's she's a crazy yep. dynamo. Yep. All right, Terry. Yep. I need to know what do you write? <laughs> I've written two novels two children's books, two screenplays. Oh, wow. I'm on my third screenplay, and um, I do the show, and I also sew. <laughs> so, oh, wow. you know, I'm quite busy, and I work full time, so it's a ton of fun, and you have to be happy with what you're doing, right? Yeah. All right. I, so I don't now, know how you fit in that full-time job. <laughs> I know. I know. Well, actually, she's mentioned, she writes on her, on the, um, on her ride into work. 
you know, she's yeah. like using every minute of her time. Sure. So Terry, our time yes. is very, very short. What's the update? Let's okay, talk about so, your show. Yes, as you know, I took a hiatus from the show for my daughter's wedding, Chelsea. She got married in New Orleans in April. And what a time that was. It was my first time in the city and her husband is from there and he's a true southern gentleman so we had events all week long leading up to the wedding and so i thought for the first show coming back it would be appropriate to take a trip to the big easy and have a new orleans dinner now if you think back to the first appreciation gathering where we hosted a dinner for the firefighters and police officers I did cook a Louisiana dinner um, in honor of the first responders and the hurricanes down there. And on that menu, we had the Cajun shortbread with skewered shrimp and andouille right. sausage. We had Louisiana summer salad, jambalaya, and king cakes. But I have to tell you about this menu coming up next week is going to be something that the locals would cook. So it's not going to be anything you're really going to recognize unless you're thinking about the drink I'll be serving. And then that's one that everybody knows about. So I'm really excited to get back into it. All right. Well, listen, our, our time goes away. Um, <laughs> thank you for all you do. Looking forward to next week's show. And thanks for being here to say hello. Oh, well, thank you for having me. Looking forward to it. All right. See you soon, Terry. Okay, Bye, Terry. Bye-bye. All right. Now, I think I say the first one, right? That's all we have for you this week. Please keep talking and be in touch. You can reach us by sending email to weekly at hcam.tv or give us a call at 508-435-7887 or on all the usual social media. Okay, and stay tuned. Directly following Hopkinton Weekly is a new time slot called Debut where HCAM will run new episodes. Faster on the teleprompter, please. And programs. This week we're featuring the latest bocce tournament from the Senior Center, which is super fun. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Take care and good night.